Good morning, everyone. Welcome to South Highland Presbyterian Church. My name is Dallas. I'm the intern here. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I said my name is Dallas Knight. I'm the intern here. I just want to uh, invite you all, uh, welcome you all to worship this morning. Uh, with heavy hearts, you know, we're sending off two of our beloved members of this church, Matthew and Abby Grauberger. Uh, but we are excited to be able to uh, send them off with worship this morning. So I invite you to spend these next few minutes to prepare your hearts to worship. Please stand with me in body or spirit for the call to worship. O oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O that today you would listen to his voice. Let us worship the Lord God Almighty, the Creating Father, the Redeeming Son, the Empowering Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we praise you this morning because you are a God who blesses us with beautiful friendships, with wonderful summer days. And you're a God who doesn't change even as we experience so much change in our life. Lord, we worship you and we honor you as we draw near to you this morning in worship. We thank you for your kindness. And it's in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit that we pray this morning. Amen. The scripture tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But if we confess our sins, he, who is, faith, he is faithful and just, and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in his mercy and in his kindness, let us now confess our sins together before God. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts. Cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength through Jesus Christ, your Son.
We praise you, O God. We claim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall show forth your praise. Brothers and sisters, since we have been reconciled to God, we can now be reconciled to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. hearty welcome indeed to all of who gather this Lord's Day to worship and praise our God who is with us always. We thank you for being here today, you who gather in worship in our sanctuary, and you who join us by means of electronic communication from wherever you are in the world. We're glad that we can be together in spirit and in body as the body of Christ. Welcome to you. This is, of course, a bittersweet day for South Highland as we are saying farewell to two very special people, Matthew and Abby Grauberger, who have been such a bright light, uh, such an inspiration to us in their music leadership and in their participation overall in the life of the congregation. So congratulations to you on your upcoming op opportunity in Boston, and, uh, and we're going to miss you. Thank you so much. And we'll have a chance later today to express our uh, appreciation a little more thoroughly. There will be a reception honoring them in the Davis Family Hall, so please plan to join us and uh, share in that special time together. I invite you all please to sign the friendship pads. Let us know that you're worshiping with us, and if there are particular prayer needs, please note those on the pad as well. I'm looking for uh, Daniel and Jessica Killale and their baby, Nora, who they stayed at our house last night, so they're on their way, I think. So when you see them later, give them a warm greeting as uh, you meet for the first time their precious little girl. Uh, we uh, express our condolences to the Cook family, Scott and family, upon the death of your father, Richard, and uh, do know of our prayers and our thoughts for you all. 
And we celebrate with the Heisers today uh, the birth of their grandson, Kermit and um, Megan. Thank you. Kermit and Megan's uh, son, Levi. Thank you. The rose announces that. Uh, also, remember our Social Justice Book Club will meet this evening at 6.30. Invite you to come into the Davis Family Hall. We'll be meeting in person. Uh, you're welcome to come even if you've not yet finished the book or read the book. I think you'd find it helpful and encouraging. The softball team will be gathering on Tuesday evening at 8.30, Spain Park, for their game. So join that if you can. And we're about to begin many, many fall activities. Among those is an opportunity to help some children most of them are second graders uh, who need some encouragement in their reading skills. If you'd like to consider being a STAIR tutor, you see the information there in the bulletin, and please be in touch with Lou Mahon and others as they are organizing for the fall tutoring. Many other opportunities to grow and serve together in the life of Christ here at South Highland. I invite our children now to come forward for a time with Katja O'Leary. Come on down, kids. Come on this way. And come sit right up here. Perfect. Come on a little closer towards me. Come right here. Oh, good, Linda, and I'm glad you're coming too, buddy. Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to talk about prayer. And prayer is when you do what? Yes. You can, you can do it, your hands together. And, and who are you talking to when you pray? You're talking to God. That's exactly right. Well, there is a special thing to help you to remember how to talk to God. Hold up your hand. Yep, hold up your hand. This first finger that's closest to you is the, fam is the finger that is for your family. For your mom and your dad and your grandparents and your cousins, all the people who are close to you. So when you think about that finger, you pray for those people. Your next finger is your pointer finger. Your pointer finger is for your teachers and doctors and other people who take care of you and help you. The second finger. The third finger is for the leaders of the country. For the president, President Biden, for the mayor, uh, Mayor Woodfin, yes. Or the king, um, yeah. And the king, too. Um, but you know, we don't have a king here in the United States, so we pray, pray for the president and also the governor. Or the mayor, and the mayor, yes, definitely. All right, this finger here, the next finger, it's a weak finger. It doesn't. Can you, can you make your, your finger stand up by yourself? It's kind of hard to do it. It doesn't stand up very straight, does it? Oh, that's pretty good. It's this one, though. That one. That one. <laughs> it's hard to do it. Okay, so you've got that fourth finger, and that's the one, because it's the weak finger. It's weak. It, ye, uh, I think so. And so this weak finger is for the people who are sick, and you pray for the people who are sick with that finger. All right, this last little finger, this little bitty pinky, guess who that is? You pray for yourself. You pray for yourself. You pray for yourself last. That's perfect. This is the one, pinky now. Lift your pinky. That, that's perfect. Pinkies. Everybody hold up your pinky. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. All right, boys and girls, if you remember that, that'll be a good way for you to pray before you go to bed at night, okay? All right, let's bow our heads, and let's, let's do our hands like you said, Jacob. Gracious God, thank you for the many gifts that you have given us. Thank you for um, helping us remember the five-finger prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please pray with me. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The uh, Old Testament lesson is 2 Kings chapter 3, verses 4 through 20. <clears throat> now King Mesha of Moab was a sheep breeder who used to deliver to the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. But when Ahab died, <clears throat> excuse me, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jehoram marched out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. As he, as he went, he sent word to King Jehoshaphat of Judah, the king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to battle against Moab? <clears throat> he answered, I will. I am with you. My people are your people. My horses are your horses. Then he asked, by which way shall we march? Jehoram answered, by the way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom set out. And when they had made a roundabout march of seven days, there was no water for the army, for the animals that were with them. <clears throat> then the king of Israel said, Alas, the Lord has summoned us, three kings, only to be handed over to Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, There is no prophet of the Lord here through whom we may inquire of the Lord. Then one of the servants of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of Shaphat, who used to pour water on the hands of Elijah, is here. Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to your father's prophets or your mother's. But the king of Israel said to him, No, it is the Lord who has summoned us, three kings, only to be handed over to Moab. Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives, whom I serve, were it not that I have regard for King Jehoshaphat of Ju Judah, I would give you neither a look nor a glance, but get me a musician. And then while the musician was playing, the power of the Lord came on him. And he said, Thus says the Lord, I will make this wad eye full of pools. For thus says the Lord, you shall see neither wind nor rain, but the wad eye shall be filled with water, so that you shall drink, you, your cattle, and your animals. This is only a trifle in the sight of the Lord, for he will also hand Moab over to you. You shall conquer every fortified city, every choice city, every good tree you shall fell. All springs of water you shall stop up, and every good piece of land you shall ruin with stones. The next day, about the time of the morning offering, suddenly water began to flow from the direction of Edom until the country was filled with water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Psalter lesson today is Psalm 150, and please read responsibly with me. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourines and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson today is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, 
made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
I mentioned earlier today that we were expecting the Killalays and they have arrived. So we welcome you back, Jessica Daniel and precious little Nora, who is with us. Would you pray with me? Lord God, let now your word find a place in our hearts and in our minds to take root, to grow, that we might live as your people, as we praise the Lord, as we serve you in our lives, in all that we think and say and do. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It is a strange, seemingly trite little story that we heard from 2 Kings chapter 3 about an alliance of three kings of Judah, Israel, and Edom who often squabbled internally one with the other, now having united against a common enemy, the Moabites, because Moab, after the death of Ahab, has rebelled against them by refusing to send their quota of wool from sheep and lambs to Israel. And so, rather like the United States, the European Union, and other nations today, have united against Russia in their attack upon the, the Ukraine, so now these kings are on their way to Moab. And they decide to route through the southern desert-like regions, uh, which are less fortified with walled cities, in order to then sweep up north in this area to the southeast of the Dead Sea and the Jordan River, uh, very much like where Jordan is today. But as they're making this roundabout seven-day march through the desert, they forgot one thing. There was no water for the men or the animals. And the king of Israel cries out, Alas, the Lord has summoned us three kings only to be handed over to Moab. Desperate for water and for direction, they cry out for a prophet of the Lord. Now that's pretty much the way it goes for prophets and preachers, isn't it? I mean, the powers that be, and frankly, most of us, most of the time, pretty well want to just handle things on our own until we come up against a brick wall, some obstacle, some crisis, some epidemic, some illness that we cannot handle by ourselves. Better call in the preacher. Remember General Patton in the movie when he sends for the chaplain and orders the chaplain to pray for rain before the big battle. Or remember this sanctuary filled to capacity right after 9-11, and sanctuaries all over this country likewise. We call to the Lord in our desperation. Now one of the kings recommends they approach Elisha. He's the successor to the great prophet Elijah. Elijah had been taken up into heaven in a chariot of fire. And as he goes, his mantle, symbol of his prophetic authority, has fallen upon the shoulders of young Elisha, who takes his place. One of the servants of the king of Israel hears of their dilemma and their search for a prophet. And he says, well, we have Elisha, the son of Shaphat here, and King Jehoshaphat of, Jeru of Judah speaks up for him to his fellow prophets. The word of the Lord is with him. And so the three kings together go down and hat in hand make their appeal to Elisha for help. Elisha answers them rudely, recognizing it is only because they're in a tight spot that they turn to the Lord and his prophet. Elisha says, why don't you go to your own standard court prophets, those ones you always go, because they'll tell you just whatever you want to hear. You're yes men. However, Elisha adds this, if not for the fact that I do have a high regard for one of you, King Jehoshaphat of Judah, I wouldn't even consider helping you. But now, he says, 
get me a musician. For reasons obvious to most of us today, as we say farewell to our beloved musicians, Matthew and Abby Grauberger, this verse and the next are the very heart of our message today. Get me a musician, the prophet Elisha commanded. And then while the musician was playing, the power of the Lord came on Elisha. And he said, thus says the Lord, I will make this wadi full of pools. And then it happens. With the musician's music providing the needed accompaniment, the atmosphere is now conducive for the prophet to prophesy. As the musician is playing, the worship environment is now just right for divine visitation. And through the combined efforts of musician and prophet, music, prayer, the prophet's ear open to the voice of God, to the word of God, and then the prophet's mouth open to proclaim the word of God, thus says the Lord, the wadi shall be filled with water so that you shall drink, you, your cattle, and your animals. All this is no big deal, he says, when the Lord is involved, sought, listened for, and obeyed. This is only a trifle in the sight of the Lord. More than that, victory is yours. Moab will be at your feet. And so it happens. The next day, about the time of the morning offering, suddenly water began to flow from the direction of Edom, until the country was filled with water. You know, I began saying this is seemingly a trite little story. Well, actually, it is not. This story is actually the earliest biblical account of an event that was actually recorded in non-biblical secular history on the famous black Moabite stone. It's a massive 44-inch sort of like a, a stone in a cemetery uh, carving with the story from Misha, the king of Moab's perspective of what happened in this 9th century B.C. battle. It is, you might say, a politically correct version because the king says that the Moabites won a great victory and wiped out Israel forever. The stone was discovered only in 1868. And except for this politically correct interpretation of what happened in the battle, this account is virtually the same story as is set forth in Holy Scripture of an actual historical battle between Moab and Israel and its partners. And more than that, it is the earliest verified for sure certain extra biblical account naming the God of Israel, Yahweh. It's found now in the Louvre Museum in Paris. On the stone it says that Moab won, quote, so that Israel perished forever. Well, of course, we know they did not perish forever. And most archaeologists today around the world say the biblical version is more true to what actually happened. Well, you may say that's very nice, but our point today is not to get down into the weeds about the Moabites, but simply to note the power of God that is released in the real world of politics and power through worship, where music converges with prophetic pronouncement so that people hear and God's will is made manifest and done. Now, at its best, that's what happens Sunday by Sunday here at South Highland Presbyterian Church. On vacation a few weeks ago, and thank you for the opportunity you gave us to have a little time for rest. It's good to be back. I attended on that vacation a little worship service that was put together, a service devoid of music. Yes, God was worshiped. Prayers, including the Lord's Prayer, were offered. Uh, the gospel was proclaimed through the Apostles' Creed, but that 15-minute service with no music, no proclamation, was just absolutely flat in worship. Music is such a powerful, integral component of the whole worship experience. 
through God exalted and God praising music, wisely selected, fittingly presented after tireless preparation, often after heavy duty workout rehearsals, we are lifted to experience God's awesome presence. God's power set loose through music enables us to transcend our immediate situations, our problems, our challenges, our struggles, and be lifted up into the divine presence. Music becomes a bridge, a thin place linking heaven and earth, time and eternity. Paul instructs us about music in his letter to the Ephesians, writing, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why South Highland, since its inception in 1888, has offered the finest music we can and invested significant resources in finding the best musicians we can. Get us a musician, Andrew Ganey, John and Joyce Jennings, Philip Copeland, Jamie McLemore, Matthew and Abby Grauberger. The finest people and machinery, organs, pianists, drums, drums too. You've heard more drums here lately, right? As Psalm 150, the musician's psalm lists how we are praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with trumpets and lute and harp, tambourines, strings and pipes, loud clashing cymbals and dance. All this in worship we do to offer our best in sung and instrumental music, all in order to praise the Lord. And the Bible is just filled with stories and instruction about music and the power of music. David playing his harp to soothe the soul of troubled King Saul. The vast array of singers and instrumentalists who populate the Psalms and offer praise to God in the Jerusalem temple. Psalm 68 even describes the whole worship procession rather like what we experience here every Sunday. Your solemn processions are seen, O God, the processions of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers in front, the musicians last, between them girls playing tambourines. We might want to get a few more of those going. All so we can bless God in the great sanctuary. You know, if you think about worship pragmatically, just looking at it from the outside, you might conclude that this hour of worship is one of the most non-productive, wasted hours in your week. I mean, we don't make anything here. No shoes. Don't grow any vegetables here. Don't stitch any clothing in this hour. And yet, because we worship in this hour, because we set aside our productive money-making attempts of making material stuff and take time for spiritual stuff, Time to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Time to restore our souls. Time to sing and praise the Lord. Time to listen for God's Word. Because we do this, we then go out from here with deeper resolve to do God's Word. And so, yes, shoes are made and offered to those who need them. Sacks of food and clothing are given to those who need them. Because you see, in worship, we're being changed. We're being made into new people. We're being put together again. We who were, as Paul says, by nature, children of wrath, who were dead through our trespasses and sins, are now exposed through music and scripture and sermon and sacraments and prayer to another and wider world. The wide world of God's mercy there's a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. And God, who is rich in mercy, and out of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead through our sins, we are made alive again. For we are what He made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, 
which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Do you know that God wants you to be whole, connected, integrated, balanced today? God wants you to take your dark places and fill them with this light today? Oh, sure, you can worship God anywhere, anytime, right? But there is a special power at work when God's people gather together to worship here. A wonderful, mysterious transformation takes place as God meets us, God encounters us, God comes alive in us in new and sometimes astounding ways. William Sloan Coffin was a renowned and prophetic pastor. Having served in the Army during the Korean War and then as a CIA agent, a New Yorker born to privilege, well-connected, well-established, a concert pianist, a brilliant student, but God got hold of him and said, I want you for my ministry. He became known at Yale University where he was chaplain in the 60s and 70s for his powerful sermons and activist protests where he spoke out and acted out clearly for civil rights and against the war in Vietnam. And then in the 70s and 80s, as the pastor of the Great Riverside Church in New York City, he was one of four U.S. pastors on a delegation allowed to go to Iran in 1979 at Christmas time and lead Christmas services for the imprisoned embassy American staff. In his autobiography, he describes this struggle in faith and how yet through worship, his faith overpowered his doubts and his anger with God. He was sitting in a memorial service for a friend who had been killed in a tragic automobile accident, fuming at God for the injustice of life, arguing with God, and then he heard in that service the organist play one of the great Bach choral preludes, Christus Log in Tulsabaden, Christ stands in the bonds of death. And Coffin remembers this. It was genuinely comforting. And it made me think that religious truths like those of music were probably apprehended on a deeper level than they were ever comprehended. The leap of faith was not a leap of thought at all. The leap of faith was really a leap of action. Faith was not believing without proof. It was trusting without reservation. What we see in the story of Elisha and the musician and the three kings is that through worship, music, prophecy, proclamation, thus says the Lord, God works spiritually in ways that play out materially, tangibly through people to actually change the world that we live in. The musician played. The prophet prophesied. God brought water that sustained man and beast. In the desert wadi, the dry riverbed was filled with life-giving water. And that's how life is through Christ's death and resurrection. Through his freely offered gift, our brokenness is transcended. Our thirst is quenched with not just water for today, but with living water for all eternity. Our sin is forgiven. By grace we are saved through faith that is not our own doing, but is the gift of God. And then made whole again which is the goal, if you think about it, of every worship service here, whatever its particular focus on any given day. Then we become more fully what He has made us to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. On vacation, I got to read some stuff just for fun. And one of them that I happened on was a novel, a Dan Brown-style novel called Pope's Man, and it's about the relationship of Michelangelo and Pope Julius. Michelangelo, the 24-year-old artist, already renowned throughout the world for his magnificent David carved in Florence and the, the baptistry doors on the cathedral there, 
And Pope Julius, who took his name not from some Christian saint, but from a particular Roman Caesar. Pope Julius commanded Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel ceiling. There was no if, ands, or but about it. And Michelangelo would be up in his, uh, high up on his girders near the ceiling, and the Pope would come below and bug him, check on him day after day. And they said that it wasn't too infrequently that accidentally Michelangelo would drop blobs of paint on the Pope. Forty years or so later, Michelangelo returned again to the Sistine Chapel, this time to paint the renowned Last Judgment scene. You, you're familiar with it. It fills the wall, the front wall of the chapel behind the altar. And it's a terrifying scene, really. It's this massive, muscular Christ coming across uh, the, the clouds, uh, sweeping up into heaven those who were his believers and casting down into the depths of hell those who were not believers. Once there was a person who happened to see that scene on a day and when the light was coming in in just a particular way into this chapel, that a shadow was cast from the massive cross on the altar across the lower part, the demonic part of that painting. Uh, fresco. And it was as if this person see, saw that the cross has gone even to the depths of hell. God who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And the visitor wrote, sitting in the Sistine Chapel, the shadow of the cross over Michelangelo's abyss made my heart sing. And I knew that there was no abysmal corner of life where God is not, no hopeless condition at the heart of which He is not found, no final crisis of which He is not a part of reconciling love. Through worship, music devoutly offered, Scripture prayerfully read, Sermons honestly proclaimed, touching both heart and mind. Our broken, divided lives are put together again. And we can go out from this place as beloved children, the children God has made us to be, to do the work God has for us to do as our way of life. Matthew Grauberger and his wonderful wife, Abby, who has the sweetest, most melodious soprano voice I think I've ever heard. And you're going to get to hear it. It's something that's not in the bullet that I've asked her to add on to the service later today. These two have been God's secret agents among us in music and spoken word, bringing the gospel to life, in life. And through this gospel, bringing us to life, well done, good and faithful servants. Go with our blessing and our love. When in our music God is glorified, and adoration leaves no room for pride. It is as though the whole creation cried, Hallelujah. So has the church in liturgy and song, in faith and love, through centuries of wrong, borne witness to the truth in every tongue, Hallelujah. Let every instrument be tuned for praise that all rejoice who have a voice to raise. And may God give us faith to sing always, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
It is always important that we say why we believe what we believe. And so we share together our affirmation of faith from the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We offer now our prayers to the Lord, our petitions, our intercessions. Let us pray. As we come to you this day, Father in heaven, we know that the only way we can approach you with our petitions and intercessions is to boldly come to your throne of grace. We know that you hear us and that your desire is to fulfill all the promises in your holy word, that if we ask, seek, and knock, you will hear us and answer our cries and pleas. We have many things on our minds today. Typically, we are wrapped in our own little worlds, not always focused on others and the great needs of our day. So now we set aside our own concerns and seek to offer these prayers. We pray, Lord, for the church, for this church and churches in this community, that we may proclaim the love of Christ, that we may be the light of the world in this corner your vineyard. We pray for the church worldwide. We pray for leadership. We pray for the communication of the gospel unhindered. And for those who are challenged and suffering, may they know your extra compassion and put a hedge around them at this time. We do pray for the world. The world is so dark at times and so fraught with despair and seemingly hopelessness. And yet, Lord, you created this world. You are the God of the ages, and you are working your purpose out, and we pray that your will be done in a bold and magnificent way. We pray for all those who are hungry, those who are hurting, isolated, desolate, persons of your creation who are in desperate need for your salvation, your healing, your justice, your mercy, and grace. We pray, Lord, that they may know, even at this moment, your amazing presence in their lives and the healing they need. We pray for our neighborhood here in Southside. We know there are many needs here. The people who come in and out of our doors during the week, we touch those lives. We pray, Lord, for each one and for those that we see outside the church, at restaurants, or community, may we share the love of Jesus with them. We do pray for our city. We pray for our mayor, Randall Woodfin, many challenges that he has beyond those who are racing cars in the city. We know that there are many other things going on. May he know your guidance. We lift before you our Governor Kay Ivey. We know that as a, a state, we have many needs. We love our state, we love many things about it. We know that there are amazing gaps between the haves and the have-nots, that they may be brought together according to your will. We raise up prayers for our president who has COVID for the second time. We pray for him to have clarity in his pur purpose and mission, his duties, protect him during these days. We pray for wildfires in the West. We pray for wars in many parts of the world. And we pray for wanton wayward leaders who are out to make a name for themselves and 
are destroying others in the process. We humbly ask, Lord, that you would help us all, even as we look down our noses at others, that we might be the persons our pets think we are, loving, kind, and considerate, always there for others. Today we remember in our midst we have those who need your healing touch in their lives. You are the great physician. And we name before you Dot and Tara and Jimmy and Geraldine and Dean and Nancy, Barbara, Jackie, Deborah, Mary Frances, Jean, Mel, Peggy, Joe, Donna, Malin, Jeannie, Helen. And we remember Dan Lansford and Carol Rogers recently, the illnesses that they had for their recoveries. We lift before you Scott Cook and his family in the passing of his father, Richard Cook. May they know his family, your comfort, consolation, and healing. And we thank you today. We rejoice with Kermit and Megan Heiser on the birth of their son, Levi Malcolm. Bless him, Lord, and may he grow to love you and serve you with all his heart and soul. And today we do say so long but not goodbye to our friends Matthew and Abby who have graced us and served in ways to make us better worshipers with beauty and even bow ties. We have felt their love and enjoyed all that they are. And we send them off to a challenging field of service, we know. But we also know that you go before them and will enable them to grow, to learn, and become even more conformed to the image of Christ. So keep them safe and healthy and happy, we do pray, until and we know when we meet again. And we remember to pray, Lord, this beautiful prayer that you taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we draw near to the Lord now and worship um, during our time of offering, I wanted to invite us not to think of this as something we have to do to prove our love to God. But rather, it's an invitation to keep worshiping him by saying, when we put the money in the offering plate, we're saying, Lord, I don't want to worship this. I want to worship you. The Lord does not need your money. South Highland doesn't need your money. But the Lord wants your heart. So I invite you to think on that as the handbell choir leads us and we continue to worship together.
Father in heaven, we pray with our hearts full of thanks. We were dead in our sins, totally unable to save ourselves. But you, you, O oh God, being rich in mercy, sent your Son to save us. By his death we have life. Thank you for this undeserved gift. By the power of your Holy Spirit, send us out into the world to trust you more and to share the news of this gift. Amen. We have a few additions to our service today, coming in a little bit different place than they say they are printed, but for their amazing service to us. And first of all, I want to invite the Grawberg Where are you? Y'all come on over here. And invite the clerk of session, Lee Cleveland, to read a proclamation from the session. Before I read the session's proclamation, I want to remind you of one thing. During the pandemic, if you'll remember, there was no Sunday in which we did not have music. <laughs> Greetings and salutations to Matthew Grauberger. These past almost four years, you have blessed us by serving as Director of Music Ministry 
and inspired us with the music you have presented. You have made a joyful noise for God. You are leaving us to pursue a Master of Divinity and subsequently a PhD in worship and theology. In appreciation of your almost four years of service to South Highland Presbyterian Church, we, the session of South Highland Presbyterian Church, express our sincere thanks and gratitude and wish you every blessing in your continued studies as you pursue God's calling for you. Done and approved by the session of South Highland Presbyterian Church on this, the 20th day of June, in the year of our Lord, 2022. Thank you. Matthew, thank you for the wonderful times that you have led us in the ministry of our music here at South Highland. And this is just a little token of the picture that we will hang. Um, this is yours, but the bigger one will be in the music ministry in honor of all your work for us. Thank you. Matthew and Abby, uh, well, very sad to see you go, but I well, especially want to thank Matthew here in the last few months. Uh, sometimes when people change jobs, they get very selfish, start focusing on their future, but Matthew was very generous and gracious in helping lead the search that led us to bring Kenny Lewis in. Uh, he's been very active at the last minute uh, working with Kenny, uh, scheduling uh, interim musicians like Dr. Cook today. So thank you for uh, keeping things going up to the last end. And thank you for your gift in music, and especially for me personally, you're the best choir director I've been under in my, in my music career. So. Uh, thank the, uh, per the search committee, I won't thank you all here, but also want to thank the entire congregation for your generosity in this gift I'm about to present uh, to Matthew and Abby on your behalf. Thank you very much. And Matthew, it's been real. <laughs> Thank you so much for You gave me a letter this morning. I'll give you a letter now. Thank you. And uh, we're just so grateful for the time you all have shared with us. Um, is there any, would you like to say anything? Or? I'll say everything. Okay. And your mother is here today. She was playing in the handbells. We're delighted that you could be with us as well. She was not expecting to ring. We, um, we had a last minute need and bless her heart, she, um, she said yes. I learned saying yes from somewhere, and, and I would say her and my dad, and y'all, you have been, you, have, you all have meant so much to Abby and I. Uh, we were so moved by your love and acceptance of us, even from the very first weeks here. It's one of the things I've been, I've been blessed with, is the gift that you all are as a church. You all are a gift to the city, and you all are a gift to the world. And so I commission you, in the name of the, of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to continue to worship and serve with the passion of Christ, to do so with boldness, to do so with love and grace and humility, and continue to be the hands and feet of Christ on this corner here on Highland Avenue. I just want to tell you that you all have been such a blessing to Abby and I, and so continue to be a blessing to others in how you worship, in what you say and in what you sing, and most importantly, in what you do. May God love you and bless you and keep you. Thank you. May we pray together. Lord God sends your very powerful, special blessing upon Matthew and Abby as they go forth to a new part of the country to new studies, to new friends, to new opportunities to worship together and to spread your love and grace. Be with them, use them mightily there as you have here. And indeed, may we look forward to the time that we do meet again through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
May God 